correct. Then, uh, if I brief up the topic we were doing for the moment, is we are talking about range and the domain, where the domain is the possible input values and range is the possible output value. So, if you get uh, this kind of a function, uh, if domain is given, it's any real number. Then, if it is any real number, this goes to plus infinity. Therefore, this y value goes to negative infinity over here. Here also, when you go to plus infinity, this value also goes to the infinite side. Therefore, uh, for the range, even turn up into fx is any real number. But this kind of situation, they have given a boundary. x is any real number, the same function I'm referring to. The function is 2x plus 1 as before, the same thing. Uh, but the difference is uh, they have given the input value. Input value is greater than minus t. So the y value cannot be uh, reach below figures, which is uh, which is at the value at minus t at minus t, the value is minus 5. Therefore, uh, domain uh, range should be fx any real number and it's greater than minus 5. Here the equal mark is not there. Therefore, here the equal mark wouldn't come for the count. But if the equal mark is available, here also the equal mark should be added to the count with it. Then for this case, the same function, they have given two boundaries, lower boundary and upper boundary. So they should be bounded by both the figures where these values are included, nine and minus five. So the function exists from minus five to plus nine. That is a factor to understand, right? Okay. Let's go ahead with the next level of uh, function. So it's a quadratic values. If it is comes like fx is just like they have given x squared uh, plus we'll get plus x minus, uh, sorry, plus 2x minus 8. They have given any real number. Now let's see how to deal with this question today. Initially, it's better to draw this graph. If you draw this graph, you can understand that this function is my plus 4 is minus 4. Plus 2 is, it's minus 2 is 2, it's 4. So it's a graph like this. It travels over here. This value is minus eight. And we need to find this minimum value. We have to find this minimum value. The best way of finding the minimum value is if you differentiate it, what do you get? This is the way of doing this question today. 2x plus 2 at the turning point. This is 2x plus 2 is equals to 0. Therefore, x equals to minus 1. That means this minimum value comes at x equals to minus one. And if you put minus one into the function, what do you get with it? Minus one squared plus two times of minus one, minus eight, they are put turn up to minus nine with it. So the minimum value obtained for this function is minus nine. Then what you can understand over here is, now you can see what are the possible y values with it. That is domain range means the possible value values are okay. it. Minimum value is minus 90, including that it goes up. So you can see it's just like this, but it goes this way around. It's not an issue at all. So uh, simply you can write then the domain, sorry, range for this function, fx is any real number. And you know that today fx should be greater than or equals to where? Minus nine. So all the values are greater than minus nine onwards. That's a way of getting this one. I'll do a small uh, addition for this function. If it comes like this, but they might give you fx is the same function I'm referring to, x squared plus 2x minus eight, where x is any real number. And they have given us uh, this way, x is, greater than or equals to minus four, right. Okay. Yeah, if you happen to draw this graph, you can see the same graph as before. Starting from minus four, it goes like this and it comes over here. So the minimum value from the previous reference, we know it's minus nine. So over here, minus four value is zero. And uh, from this side, it goes up to plus infinity. Therefore, if you refer with the graph, the possible values are starting from minus nine, it goes up. So sorry, just like this. So you can say then for this one also the range you can write, fx is any real number or y is any real number and 
f x is greater than or equal to minus, and that will be the answer for that. Problem. That's a way of getting this answer. Correct. Let's go to the next approach of this people. Next approach is just like this. f x equals to x squared plus two x minus eight. X is any real number, and x is greater than or equals to minus five and less than or equals to uh, four. Right. Then again the same references. And understand that the graph goes like this way around over here. Today. Then we know that yeah, here the value is minus four and at minus five. If I put minus five into this button, then what do you get? It's minus five squared plus two into minus five minus eight. So this value is twenty five. Uh, twenty five minus ten is fifteen. Fifteen minus eight is seven. So at minus five, the answer is seven button. So, so the graph is end up from here. This part is not there. Right, okay. Then for this side, the graph goes up to where four. If I just here the value is two. If I put four, see whether what is the answer for f four with it. F four is equals to four squared plus two times of four minus eight. Sixteen plus eight is twenty four. Twenty four is turn up to sixteen. Okay. So this value is gone up to sixteen. But the here, it's not into the scale. Okay, then this value is on a sixteen. But the now see whether what are the possible y values? Y values varying from where to where? The maximum y value is here, and it goes up to where? It goes up to a minimum of how much? But the minimum of nine. So these two values are there. But the therefore you can write. For this function, f x is any real number, or you can advise any real number, and f x is you know that the minimum value is minus nine. Here yeah, the minus nine is minus nine, and the highest value obtained is how much? But they turn up to sixteen. That is the answer for that. It's a way of getting this. Okay, right. Yeah, we'll go to the another approach for this. We'll go ahead with this. But the f x is The same function x squared plus two x minus eight and x is any real number and they have given x is greater than or equals to zero and less than or equals to four. Right. Okay. Then uh, if I sketch this graph, it's the same reference to the previous graph, just like this. Sorry. I'll just draw from dotted line later on. I'll explain what it. Why am I just drawing like a dotted line? It goes like this, but then the function start from where zero, but then at zero, what was the value? We know that it's minus eight, but it's a graph starting from here, and at four, at four, we know we already found in the previous example it's sixteen. Okay, we knew that it's sixteen. This is four, just like it visible like nine. And this is sixteen. This value also included. Now you can understand that because the graph exists from this range only. You can what are the possible y values? You can see the possible y value starting from here, and it goes up to where? Up to here because the function is exist only this range. Therefore, you can write uh, as the answer. F x is any real number and f x is in between. Minus eight to plus sixteen, including them because here it's equal mark is available in the question. Right. If you go ahead with one over x again, if I just repeat it, x is any real number and it's not equal to zero. It is zero because if it is zero, the function does not exist. For the y value, even you can see the y equals to zero does not exist from this graph. Therefore, the range become. f x is any real number and f x is not equals to zero. Then I'll do a small extension for this one over x plus two. For this way, even you can say 
x is any real number and x is not equals to zero. That is a domain. Right. Okay. Then if you sketch this graph, what you can understand is it's just like this. Now you can see this entire graph shift from two units up. Therefore, you can see this axis of a symptom turn up to y equals to two. So the function is just like this and it's like this. Then if you get the y answers for this, so you can see two is not there, but all other answers are available. Therefore, you can write the range for this function. Range is, you can say, fx is any real number and you can write fx is not equals to two. That's how we need to get this value. Okay. Then a uh, small extension further. If it is just like this, but the fx equals to one over x plus two, the same thing. And they have given x is any real number and they have given us x is uh, greater than or equals to one. Okay. Then again, uh, if it is greater than or equals to one, no need to worry about this not equals to uh, what you call not equals to zero condition because already zero is not included into the range. But they, therefore, if I sketch this graph, you can understand that this is y equals to two. The graph is like this way around and you know that, but the graph starting from where graph starting from one, but if I put one here, this value is how much? Three. Now you can see the function is only this bit. Three is included because here the equal mark is there and it goes up to three. It's a function. Now, if you see from the y axis, the function exists from three is included, it goes up to here and bottom up to two only, not less than two. Therefore, you can write for this kind of situation, fx is any real number, but there's a restriction for the fx is greater than two, equal to, it's not equal to, two, it cannot be two, and less than or equals to three. That is a fact where we have to understand from this kind of situation. Okay, sir. Okay, but the next part of is uh, this one today, y equals to ax plus b over px plus q graph. We should know how to draw this kind of a graph. Uh, I'll try to explain this from an example. We will get this kind of it with the fx or y, just whatever does matter, but fx or gx, whatever you can write it. 3x plus 4 over, uh, no, I'll just make it as 8x. 8x plus 4 over 2x minus 3 or something. If you want to draw this graph over here, what you need to do is you have to uh, find that this is just like this. The basic shape of the graph is just like this. It has a vertical axis of a symptot and it has a horizontal axis of a symptot. And it can be either these two shapes. Either just like this or this way. It can be this way either. The shape is depends on the uh, format where we obtain from here. It just depends on the pressure. It varies. We will see how to draw, whether to verify this graph and this graph, and how to find those axis of asymptotes. But let's try to forward with that. But it's a way of doing it. But initially, we need to find the vertical axis of asymptote. Vertical axis of a symptote. You can make the vertical axis of a symptote by making the denominator zero. Remember that you have to by making the 
denominator zero only, you can make the vertical axis of asymptote. So what is the answer? X equals to three over two. Right, okay. Then you can just do like this. It's that is three over two. This is the vertical axis for simple. So it's better to draw like this. Y equals to three over, sorry, x equals to three over two, not y, x equals to three over two. Then we can work out with the horizontal axis of simple. Horizontal axis of a simple. Horizontal axis of simple, how do you get it? You have to make this is the way to take. The formula is y equals to coefficient of x in numerator divided by coefficient of x in denominator. That's it, right? Okay, let's come up with this. Today. For this question, you can say y equals to the coefficient of x in numerator, it's 8. Coefficient of x in denominator is 2. So it's turn up to y equals to 4. So you can not like this. Okay. Then uh, how to verify the shape of the graph? That's the important point. Right. We can do it in this way. Initially, find out the intersection with the x-axis. Intersection with intersection with x-axis. If it is intersection with x-axis, how do you get it? But you know that y coordinate is equal to zero. So you can write from this equation 8x plus 4 over 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3 is equal to zero. If you cross multiply, what do you get? 8x plus 4 equals to 0, therefore x equals to minus 1 over 2. Right. Okay. Here it means the x axis at minus half. It's here. Okay. This is the intersection. Sorry, not here. It's minus half here. It's not. Not this. It's minus 1 over 2. So the graph goes from this point. Okay. Then we can find intersection with the y-axis. Intersection with y-axis. You can make the intersection of the y-axis, how do you get it? x equals to zero. Okay. So what do you get? You can say y equals to eight into zero plus four over two into zero minus three. Okay. That's turn up to minus four over three. So it's over here. Then you can say it's minus four, which is a value over here. Then what you can understand is we have to find out the shape. Then the graph should travel through this point. Therefore, it should go like this way around. The other part is just like this. That's how we need to get this answer. Yeah. We have to do this question y equals to 6x minus 5 divided by 3 minus 6. Can you, if you just want to find out, initially you will get the vertical axis of a symptote. symptote. That means how do you get it? Denominator, make it into 0. That is x equals to 3. So initially we just draw this. Then we can get the horizontal axis of symptote. Symptote. Right. Okay. Then uh, how do we get it? So y equals to the coefficient of x in numerator divided by coefficient of x in denominator is minus one y equals to how much? Minus 6. Then it just uh, graph like this. y equals to 
minus 6. Then we can find the intersection with x axis. This is the x axis means we will make y equals to 0. That is 6x minus 5 divided by 3 minus x equals to 0. So if we cross multiply 6x equals to 5, x equals to 5 over 6. But x equals to 5 over 6 is somewhere over here. Yeah, then intersection of the y axis. Intersection with y axis. How do we the intersection of the y axis means? But then you have to make x equals to 0. Then you can say uh, y equals to 6 times of 0 minus 5 divided by 3 minus 0. So let's turn up to minus 5 over 3. Let's turn up to minus 5 over 3. Yeah, somewhere over here. It's not into the scale. Therefore, the graph should travel through these four. You can just mark up like this well. That's the shape of the graph. That's how it comes. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. This graph is we already drawn. Then they ask about uh, find the range. They have given this condition for them. They might give you x is any real number and x is greater than one, right? Okay. Then they ask to find the range for them. That means what you need to do is this is one is somewhere over here. Over here. So I just said a different color for that. One is over here. Then if you substitute one, we need to find this coordinate. But how do you get one? So I can put y value for x equals to 1 is 3 minus 2 into 1 divided by 1 plus 1 to 3. Let us turn up to y equals to half. So this value become half. It's not into the scale. Therefore, the graph is from here. It just goes like this. That's how it comes. So if you consider in the y values starting from half, 
it comes to this point. Up to here is a value. Therefore, the range is you can say y is any real number range. You can say y is greater than minus 2, but it's not equal and less than or equals to 1 over 2. Because it's at 1, the value is 1 over 2. So this should be the final answer for this problem. Right? Okay. But the, uh, yeah, our next topic is combining transformations. The combining transformations with it. Now let's see what kind of it what is mean by the combining transformations. For example, just like this, they have they might give you a question somewhere like this. For this graph, they have given us uh, two axis of asymptotes. Y equals to five and uh, you get, I'll just uh, set if two different colors for that. Then X equals to six. They have given us these coordinates uh, apart from this. This coordinate is origin. Sometimes they won't mark this coordinate, but, they, but anyway, be careful with that. And this coordinate we will get uh, 3 minus 4. And this is we'll get 4, 0. That is how it comes with the combined transformations just like this. Right, OK. Then uh, they have given this the function is fx, right? They ask us to draw this much. Draw f x plus one plus two. That's the drawing we are going to do. But in this case, uh, from our AS level work, we know that this transformation for the, over here. Uh, if you know this this transformation here is the x plus one, this is effect for x axis. Effect x axis, opposite way, x transformations are opposite. Opposite way, that means what you can say today, that means uh, x is your plus one means x goes to the positive side, but it's the opposite operation today. So you can say shift by minus one. That's what you know to understand. If you're considering this one, Pate, this is totally outside from the function. So you can say effect y axis. You know that y, y operations are straightforward operations. Pate. So you can say in same way. That is plus two means Pate, the entire graph shift from five units out. So you can say shift by minus one along what? along x-axis. So in the same way, you can say shift by plus two along y-axis. That's operation where we can do that, okay. Now let's see how does this work out with these operations. So we need to, when you want to do this, we have to write down the coordinates. What are the coordinates? 0, 0, what happened to 0, 0? What happened to 3 minus 4? What happened to 4, 0? And what happened to axis of asymptotes? x equals to 6 and y equals to uh, 5. Then put the x plus 1 means this x operation is opposite. Plus 1 means minus 1. 
Therefore, the x coordinates turn up to minus one here. Then three turn up to how much? Minus one is two. Four turn up to three. This is x is turn up to if you go from minus one to this much, x equals to five. We carefully understand that this is does not make an impact on y axis. So you just keep it. This transformation does not make an impact on y axis. I'll write with the y transformation in different color to understand it. Then what happened to zero? Pute? Plus two. So you can say it's effect the same way. But if you add two to this one, two. Then if you add two, it's minus two. If you add two, turn up to two. This one doesn't make any effect. This is turn up to y equals to seven. That's a way of getting this. But now let's try to draw this once. So the graph goes like this. So initially, zero zero turn up to one minus one two. It's traveled from minus one this side. Two is here. Minus one two. That is this point. But it shift from. One unit to negative side and two units up, right? Three minus for this point, it shift from one unit this side then two units up. Three minus four goes to this way. Actually, this should be some kind of a value lower than that, so it's turn up to two minus two minus two. Point here, put there. Two minus two. If you draw it on a scale, you can understand much clearly this graph. Then four zero, four zero turn up to. Three two put it. it's parallel to this. Three two right. Then axis of a symptom x equals to five. It comes like this. I'll just choose the same color. Then it's clear with you. X equals to five and y equals to seven put it. For that I have used a gradient yellow color. Y equals to seven. Right. Then what you can get here is you can just draw the graph here this way. You can see a transformation somewhere like this. 